What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Birds will sing about your heart Maybe the trees will whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope mm. On August 10th, 2019, our little summer baby came into this world about three weeks early due to an emergency induction I feel weird even calling it an emergency because in the end there was nothing wrong there was no big reason to induce that early but it just means we get a few extra weeks to live on our little baby I went in for my usual OB appointment on Thursday let me see what date that was it was Thursday, August 8th, and at every single one of my doctor's appointments, I had an ultrasound scheduled um, just to make sure that the fluid was okay around the baby because they noticed they noticed some possible kidney issues, so they just wanted to make sure that the fluid was okay and um, growth was okay since I was gestationally diabetic. Even though my numbers were controlled, I never had to go on insulin. I did go on insulin with my first daughter. But with this baby, I did not have to. And ironically enough, this was the week that my OB um, was out of country. She was going to be in China for a week and she warned me beforehand, just so you know, I'm gonna be gone um, as of August 8th till like the 15th, I'll be in China, but I'll be back in time to deliver your baby. She wasn't back in time. So a different OB was seeing me that day to take over and they did my ultrasound. They got me into the room. Do you hear the baby? Tyler was with me for my ultrasound, but then he had to leave to go back to work. As I'm waiting there, I can hear like conversation going on in, um, I guess in the lobby where the nurses were discussing like what to do. And I just had this gut feeling like, okay, something's not normal because I hear them discussing my ultrasound and I hear multiple doctors talking about my ultrasound. So the doctor comes in and she tells me that uh, the fluid on my ultrasound was looking very cloudy and I could see something floating and they were worried that it was meconium, that the baby had pooped inside <laughs> of my uterus. She said it was probably nothing, but just to be sure, she wanted to send me to labor and delivery to be monitored um, and have the high-risk doctor look at it. She said more than likely it was nothing, but something about it was making her very uneasy and uncomfortable. So they sent me to labor and delivery and I was strapped up to some monitors and had to stay in bed while they listened to baby's heartbeat, make sure baby wasn't in any kind of distress. The funny thing is, is I was still contracting. Like I started having horrible contractions <laughs> I think on Monday or Tuesday of that week to the point where I thought I was in labor and I made my husband and my grandma stay home from work just for it to ease up like a few hours later. But I had been having what I Googled and now have kind of just said myself, prodromal labor for about three days and it was continuing even into the hospital to the point where they, they were watching my contractions. Like you're contracting regularly. They're just not, they weren't getting stronger. They weren't getting more painful. Um, I was just like constantly contracting. The week before at my appointment, I was dilated to a one and a half. And on that Thursday when they admitted me into the hospital, I was dilated to a three. So some cervical changes were happening, which made me feel better about the contractions, like not being for nothing. So the high risk ultrasound technician came in, did an ultrasound on me, and she even saw, like I could clearly see the floating particles in um, my amniotic fluid. And she even said, she's like, yeah, I see those right there. That's, um, there's something floating in there. And I asked her, I was like, I know you can't give me medical advice or tell me, but can you tell me what you're thinking it looks like? And she said, it's looking like meconium. It's looking like the baby may have went to the bathroom inside of the womb. And like my heart just dropped because I knew the risks that go along with that. And I was just terrified. I didn't know what that meant. I knew that meant I would probably, they'd probably more than likely want to induce me. She said that she was going to send the results to the high-risk doctor and then he was going to make 
the ultimate decision and that my OB was just kind of standing by waiting for his word. I was really stressed. I was only 36 weeks and like four or five days. We weren't expecting the baby to come until about 39 weeks. That's when my doctor originally talked about inducing me for gestational diabetes. We had nothing prepared and I think the most emotional part, this is gonna sound really dumb. We had bought Edie tickets to go see the Wiggles and if I were to be induced, it meant I couldn't go with her. And that was gonna be like our last family thing to do as a family of three. And we had been looking forward to that, that time. I'd bought her a costume and I just remember feeling like heartbroken. So the high risk doctor came in and he said to us, it could be one of three things. He said two, it could be meconium, that the baby passed a stool in the womb from some type of stress. And since I already had a placental abruption at 24 weeks and was hospitalized, he was betting on that one that maybe the baby had experienced some other type of stress because then they saw again on ultrasound that spot where my placenta was starting to separate from the uterus, which in previous ultrasounds, they weren't seeing that clear spot, but now they could distinctly see it. So he was thinking maybe my placenta started to separate even more. So he said with those three things combined with me being gestational diabetic, um, the possibility of my placenta separating even more and the possibility of the baby passing meconium, he said we needed to induce. And I just remember like my gut dropping because one that meant I'm not going to see the wiggles with my daughter. Two, that meant we were going to have a baby three weeks early, almost four weeks early. I was so scared that that meant like I would end up having a C-section or I just didn't want to be induced again. I wanted to give my body a chance to go into labor on its own, even though like we had already talked about being induced at 39 weeks. It's just like, it was a huge shock. I cried a lot and for a very long time, the nurses and doctor told us that they would be um, starting a low dose of Pitocin that evening, Friday evening the 9th. Um, but then on August 10th, they give me the full dose and actually get like the induction started. And the funny part is on Friday, just from being there overnight, I had dilated another centimeter. So I was out of four. So again, my contractions were doing something. They just weren't consistent enough. They also weren't expecting the low dose of Pitocin to throw me into labor. And boy, did it. I knew I wanted my labor experience with this baby to be completely different than with Edie. Not that Edie's labor was bad, um, but I just wasn't present and it was more about like getting through it rather than working with my body to let it do what it was supposed to do. I just fought labor the entire time with her and I knew I wanted this experience to be, I wanted to be more spiritually, mentally, physically present in my labor and I wanted to just focus on this time of bringing new life into the world. So I had made the decision to have an unmedicated birth. I was, I did have an epidural and IV pain meds with Edie. So I'm not saying like one is better than the other. I just wanted to see what my body was capable of. And I told my doctor beforehand that I didn't want an epidural. And she looked at me and she went, why? <laughs> Well, let me tell you, by the end of it, I was wondering why too. I just knew this was an experience I wanted to have. With Edie, we had my husband, my mother-in-law, and my mom in the room when I gave birth to her. And this time, we hired a doula. So it was literally just me, my husband, and our doula. And that was incredible. Man, I, I cannot explain the difference of having a doula and just having like that emotional support system between my husband and her was insane. So they started my low dose of Pitocin at, I think it was eight o'clock in the evening on Friday. They started at 0.5 and then like every hour they up it one. So until you reach a four and then they keep you at a four like all night. And the thought is you're just be like contracting a little bit and you can sleep through that. So since I was already contracting, it took them about like upping it in, I think it was around a two. And then that's when my contraction started like going. And I mean, they were kind of how I remember. They felt like period cramps. Uh, the difference is like this time I was like walking through them. I was moving through them. That was a big thing for me too about not having an epidural. So I wanted to be able to move and I wanted to be able to go to the bathroom and not be catheterized. Is that how you say it? I don't even know. I just wanted to have more control over my body and I didn't want to be bedridden the entire time I was in labor because I hate laying down and just waiting. I hate that. As my contractions started to progress a little bit, we noticed that um, baby's heart rate was on the lower side and the nurses had pointed that out. They weren't really happy with 
where a baby's heart rate was, like every time I'd have a contraction, their heart rate would drop. And my doula just looks at me, she's like, I'm just gonna let you know, I don't know how much longer they're gonna let you go with your, with the baby's heart rate looking like it is. Like, I just, I just don't know. Um, Cause I told her my goal was to not have a C-section. I really didn't want to have a C-section. And I just remember like, my heart dropping and this like gut wrenching feeling thinking this isn't gonna this isn't happening like i don't i don't know what to do i don't feel in control right now i want to have this baby vaginally and i want to do it in the most mindful way i previously i had made a birth playlist on spotify mostly just worship songs no it was all worship songs and we had brought a bluetooth speaker and I remember just making the conscious decision, nope, we're getting through this. God, I need you more than ever right now. I need you to be over my baby's heart rate. I need you to make them strong and help me work with my body for the way you designed it to. And let's get this baby here. Like, let's just do this. And Tyler turned on my playlist. It was the most incredible experience going through contraction after contraction and hearing these worship songs I had put together and just like singing through them. And as I was doing that, baby's heart rate started to raise. And I just remember thinking, thank you, God. Thank you so much. We're, we're gonna do this. This is your creation that you've made inside of me and you have given me a part in creation. And I want to bring this life into the world. However you best see fit and I am surrendering control, whether that means through a c-section through a vaginal delivery if i end up getting pain meds i don't care i just want this baby here and healthy and i had my doula singing behind me the worship songs and humming them and then tyler was swaying with me as i was going through contractions and it was just it was a spiritual experience that i was looking for through my labor and i would say that was probably like the prime time in my labor because yes the contractions were painful and i was getting through them but like i was still mindfully there and grounded but soon after that is when things started picking up. Timeline wise, this is like in the middle of the night between two and 4 a.m. whenever my contractions really started to get going and they were painful. We were trying all sorts of different positions. There was one position I was in that baby's heart rate just completely fell off the monitor. My doula was like, okay, we don't need to be in that position. We need to keep baby's heart rate strong. And we found out that the best position for me to be in was standing and that's what felt the best to my body. But Standing for hours on end as you're contracting puts such a heavy toll on your body and I felt so tired. I remember wanting to lay down at one point and I told my doula that I was like, I really wanna lay down and try to labor in bed. She's like, okay, if you're sure. So we went to lay down as I was like in a break between contractions and as soon as I laid down, they started up and I just shot up and I was like, nope, nope, we're not laying down. That's not happening. This hurts. I'm not doing this. It just got to the point where my contractions were hurting so bad and i was like this is insane why did i decide to go unmedicated the nurse checked me and she's like you're at a seven your water is bulging like baby's right there we're just waiting for your water to break and that was around four or five a.m that's whenever like and i could feel the pressure of that and it was hurting so bad and i was really starting to fight contractions at this point my doula had to stop me and she said hey we need to have a conversation about surrendering and I was like, surrendering, what do you mean? I thought she was meaning like getting pain meds. And she was like, you need to like tell yourself that these contractions are okay, that you're safe. This pain is a safe pain. Like you are in the best environment right now and you need to like let go and let your contractions do their thing. Cause I was really tensing up and fighting them. And at that point I was just like, oh, dang it. Okay, so I, at that point, just like let go. And I was moving in different positions. I was squatting, um, I was standing and leaning over the bar on the bed. And I remember just thinking like, I can't do this much longer. This hurts, I'm tired. At one point I had a really, really strong contraction and I was standing up, leaning over the bed. And then I just was like, I need to squat right now. Like I need to get in a squat position because my body, like something is happening. So I squatted and as soon as I did, I felt just this push and my water broke everywhere and immediately i felt baby's head like hit on my cervix it was almost instantly as soon as my water broke i looked at my doula i was like i'm about to start pushing like i need to push and she's like okay then you push like you listen to your body like there was no transition period and 
My doctor wasn't even at the hospital yet. Like they thought it was gonna be a little while longer. My nurse calls as soon as my water breaks and I say, I'm pushing, like this baby's about to come out. The nurse calls and like, hey, we should probably tell the doctor she can get here now. <laughs> they didn't think my doctor was going to make it. So they scrubbed up another woman who was the laborist on the floor. And they just have like this rush of a team come in and I'm like leaning over the bed and my nurse is like, do you wanna get in bed? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm, the moment I'm getting in that bed is the moment I'm pushing this baby out. So y'all need to get your crap together and be ready. So I, I just leaned over the bed and I was pushing and screaming and I was so embarrassed because I didn't want to be that typical person who like screamed during labor. But y'all, unmedicated delivery is no joke. And at that point I was thinking an epidural sounds really nice. I was involuntarily pushing as I was in the squat position. And I remember thinking like, I feel baby's head right there. I'm about to push this baby out and as soon as I was thinking that the doctor came in, they scrubbed her up real fast. So I get in bed and my doctor looks at me and she goes, okay, do you want some met numbing medicine for down there? Cause I'm gonna give you that and then we can start pushing. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Do whatever, I don't care. And then she looks, she goes, well, baby's head's right there. So we're just gonna push, like they're right there. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> no time for numbing medicine. And through two contractions, I pushed and baby's head was out. She told me to take a deep breath and start pushing again to get the rest of the baby's body out. And my water broke at 6.55 a.m. and baby was born at 7.10 a.m. And the moment we had been waiting for the whole time, it was so funny. I had just given birth and my doctor was holding the baby and wiping them off. And I'm just thinking, no one has said whether or not my baby's a boy or a girl, which now that I'm thinking about it, no one knew that we weren't finding out because my doctor wasn't there. This was a, a doctor I wasn't usually seeing. And I just looked at her and I was like, is it a boy or a girl? Is it a boy or a girl? Uh, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and the moment she said that it was a little boy, like my heart, uh, I wanna cry thinking about it. <laughs> it was an incredible feeling knowing that we had brought this little baby into the world and we had a little boy and we have a little girl and I was just like so relieved. Like at that point I thought I did it. I met my goal of having an unmedicated delivery. Tyler was crying. He was much more emotionally present during this labor because he had to be. I was like leaning on him for support the entire time. It was just a beautiful experience. I will say though that pushing hurt the worst. Usually after your water breaks, baby has a chance to like descend down. Um, but when my water broke, he, was forcefully pushed out, which caused him to have a ton of bruising around his head. And the doctor said that's just from him coming so fast. Like there was no time for him to descend into the mind broken now slowly in the way that the baby should. Surprisingly, I didn't tear like with Edie had a se second degree tear with this baby. She said it, it wasn't even a first degree. Like it was a tiny, tiny tear that only needed a, a few stitches. And we did get to do delayed cord clamping with this baby, which is something that I wanted to do. Um, and even though he was born at 36 weeks, six days, he weighed eight pounds, 12 ounces, and he was 21 and a half inches long. So he was a huge baby. He's still a big baby. He latched right away. Our nursing journey has been incredible. <laughs> like so much easier than Edie. And he's just a little dream. Like even though we had so many complications with him in the womb, granted we've had a lot of other issues since he was born, since he is technically still a preemie. It's weird to think about because he's not the size of a preemie, he's not what you would think, but since he was still born under 37 weeks, he is considered a preemie um, and he had some issues related to that. Also, my water, just said it you guys, it was fine, it was just really thick vernix. Whenever I delivered the placenta, they put it in like this little container to send to the specialist because he wanted to see it. And they said it looked normal. Like there was nothing, so really there was no reason to induce. But like I said, we do get a few extra weeks to love on this little baby, which I'm so thankful for. Cohen, Scott, Martin, ugh, I'm obsessed with you and I love you and your birth story. It's all your own. It was perfect. It was everything I ever imagined and dreamed it would be even though right after having you I was in so much pain and I was like I'm never having an unmedicated birth again I'm so glad I did because it made me focus on bringing you into this world and you are our pride and joy your big sister loves you your daddy loves you all all of your family 
loves you and is obsessed with you and we can't wait to watch you grow. We're hoping to have more vlogs in the next few weeks just documenting Cohen's first few weeks of life. He's currently two weeks old and we are about to move so that's gonna be a fun journey so if you want to follow along with that be sure to subscribe give this video a like um and don't forget to check out our social media we're most active on instagram that's where you're gonna see most of my stories with the baby because i'm obsessed we love you guys we thank you so much for watching bye Spread your love What if your sweetness could